Well, it looks like NASDAQ is going to 86 their plan to have Bitcoin and crypto custody. And on the surface, this looks look like a big win for Gary and the SEC. But if we peel back the layers, to me, it just looks like somebody who is managing risk effectively. And what I'm talking about is there was a uh, article that just came out uh, this morning. NASDAQ halts plan for crypto custody services due to the U.S. regulatory conditions. And of course, if you just take a look at the at the title, you think to yourself, ah, there goes Gary, you know, winning again, even though he lost that uh, ripple case, I think, for the majority of it. But when we peel back the layers again, it says some things different. So this was actually said in March that NASDAQ was putting together infrastructure and regulatory approval for the custodian service. It was actually slated to go live in the second quarter of this year. And of course, we've passed all that. CEO Dina Friedman said in an earnings call on Wednesday, which would be today, the firm will, however, aim to continue supporting the digital asset industry in several ways. And this is the part you have to focus in on. It's not just about the titles. I could give you just a title and say, this is what's going on, boo hoo, or I give you the story behind the story. They say this is including partnerships with potential ETF issuers, which would probably be BlackRock and Fidelity, all the rest of them, as well as providing technology for crypto custody. So on the surface, it looks like, ah, you know, this is just Gary getting his way in the SEC. But in reality, to me, this looks like someone's like, look, we don't want to deal with all the different headaches. At the end of the day, we just want to be a little bit more comfortable in what we do. And for us, the risk doesn't work out for the reward. And they're just managing the risk, I think, in an effective way. So yes, we lose one more uh, entity that wants to do crypto custody, but it is what it is. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section where I'm wrong there. And then also, I want to talk to you about tempering expectations. So you're going to see as we get closer to the bull run, which of course I believe starts to you know kick off around next year, April 2024 when Bitcoin having. I've talked uh, ad nauseum about the four-year cycles, but you're going to see stuff like this and you're like, oh, maybe I should get into this. This was an article uh, just yesterday. One inch token hits a three-month high amid surge in South Korean trading, Korean trading volumes. And when you see stuff like this, you're like, man, I should probably get into that. And I was going to talk about this yesterday. Just some things came up and I was uh, going to show you how I think things were going to go. And this is what happened. First of all, one inch is a fantastic decentralized exchange. I have no problems with it whatsoever. But if you're just chasing pumps, you're going to get wrecked. And if we take a look at in the last seven days, it looks pretty good, quite honestly. And here it was the 17th. You know, the one inch token itself hit a 56 cents over last week. So right there, you'd be like, hey, Maybe I should get into this, but what goes up must come down. Inevitably, when you hear about the pump, it's usually too late, and then down it goes. So uh, I'm not saying that this one can't go up, but just be careful out there, especially with these different articles that are going to hit you with the headlines, and you're like, I got to get in now. If you're going to get in, do it for the fundamentals, for the right reasons, not because you're chasing a 10 or 20% pump, which is idiotic. But what I, I will say about this, about one inch, I've used it before as far as a decentralized exchange it works out really well. They are doing things. And I like I've always say, pay attention to the projects that work their A off in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. And this is from uh, Tangem. This is a cold storage device, which I have ordered. Unfortunately, they are all sold out. So I'm waiting. It's been five, it's been four weeks now. I should get it next week. I'll do a review on it, but it looks very interesting. And... If you may notice right here that they've partnered already with Tangem and it's powered by one inch. So there's going to be swap functionality as well as a cold storage device. And I think this might be the future. Again, uh, I'll do the review. No, they haven't paid me anything. Yes, I had to buy the thing myself, but uh, I want something a little bit uh, easier. I'm using this ledger all the time uh, as well as like uh, Elipal and Arculus. So I'll do the review in a bit, but again, Pay attention to those projects that are doing things in the bear. And then lastly, to, to temper expectations, this video has been making the rounds. And it's Kathy Wood. She's the CEO, and I guess CIO, of ARC Investment Management. And she came on and she talked about how the bull case for Bitcoin is 1.5 million per coin. Or that was the bull case, but she said the base case was like 636,000, somewhere around that, that, uh, that number. I need to make myself crystal clear. When I got in 2017, John McAfee said the same thing. He goes, look, it's just math. 
in a year or so, you know, a very short amount of time, Bitcoin's going to hit a million dollars. And I believe that to heart. When you see these types of things, this is, she may be genuine in what she talks about, but she didn't talk about a time frame. Now, I didn't, I watched the whole clip maybe before, maybe after she did, but you're going to probably get these little snippets and these headlines like, ooh, 1.5 million. So, you know, when the bull run comes, whatever you want to do, my goals are not your goals. If you want to hold till it gets 1.5 million or you believe it's going to be the next reserve currency, fantastic, do what you do. But you have to understand that these types of things that are going to come out, they're going to dilute you into what you're thinking of as to how high things can go. Get a little bit of a grip, understand that what goes up must come down. I think we're going to have a fantastic bull run coming up. But as far as 1.5 million or 636,000, the next one, I don't see it happening. I could be wrong, hope I'm wrong, that'd be awesome but just temper expectations a little bit better. And then lastly, just wanted to talk about this. And, and as you may know, <laughs> I talk about a lot of projects that I own, so I'm super biased. I hope everybody knows that on this channel. I'm not talking about you know, some crazy, wacky crypto because I don't own it. I own everything, everything I talk about. And one of these, again, I'm super biased, is Chainlink. And I'm excited about this. I've been dollar cost having Chainlink since 2017, buying and selling and so on and so forth, but mostly accumulating in the last uh, year, year and a half or so. So Chainlink just came out and said they're going to do cross-chain interoperability protocol. They've launched on Avalanche, Ethereum, Optimism, and Polygon mainnets. To me, I think this is the future. It's not just one chain. We all have to combine those things and get the best of all the worlds combined. So first of all, you want to ask yourself, what the heck is Chainlink? If you don't know, Chainlink is an oracle. So blockchain is fantastic, but it's really bad at pulling outside real-world data into the blockchain. And that's what Chainlink actually does. And I've been following this for quite some time, and they've got connections a lot of different places. One of those also being Swift Network and stuff like that. I get it. So I see this as a positive win. I will link this article in the description so you can get more into detail. But just know that you know, people will say, well, it's not the only Oracle out there and there's other Oracles that can do it. Yeah, true. Here's the top 23. And you can see that Chainlink is far and away, as far as market cap, 3.7 billion. It doesn't mean Band can't beat it at some point. API 13 or Nest or DI, I don't know what the stuff, I don't know what these are, quite honestly. I don't know what them, so uh, that's it. I mean, one of these may actually end up dethroning Chainlink at some point, but yeah, I don't know. One thing I will like to direct your attention to is sector dominance. As far as oracles go, I mean, L1s, L2s, pretty big. Gaming, pretty big. Sector dominance right now, 0.34%. I'm not going to give you financial advice. I'm not your dad. But I'm just saying, maybe you want to take a look at this oracle section here. Maybe it could be a pretty big thing. And lastly, people will always point to it. But Rob, you understand, chain links owned by a bunch of whales. Oh, really? Well, actually, you're right. And there's a great website, Into the Block. I sh I'll throw a link in there. It's not an affiliate link, it's just a link. And I can take a look at the ownership as far as on-chain analysis of who owns what and how concentrated it actually is. And what I like about this, if you just click on any crypto, you can see what the whales are, which are a very low percentage here for Bitcoin. Investors only own about 9.5%, or they have 1.85 million Bitcoin. But the majority is in the hands of retail. So this is quite decentralized. And I think this is the gold standard for ownership, decentralizing things to where it's not concentrating in whales. How does Chainlink look? Not great, but not too bad. Number of whales, you got 55%, 55% of uh, Chainlink is in the hands of 21 wallets. Now, those could be uh, exchanges, just so you know. Now, investors, hold a little bit more, 68 uh, investors or wallets, they own 15%, and the rest is retail, which is only a 28%. So, yes, whales do own a lot, but what about the other ones, Rob? Great question. Ethereum, whales, you got five. They own 28%, almost a third, five people. And again, they can also be exchanges as well. 71 for investors, but retail... Pretty good, 57%, not too bad. How about Cardano? It's looking pretty good, actually. There's three whales that own 10%. Number of investors, 140. Retail owns the majority. Actually, this is really good. I didn't, didn't actually realize it was this, this well. ADA, looking pretty fantastic. Also, if you want to stake your ADA, we've got a stake pool called DNews, link in the description. 
How about Dogecoin? <laughs> Not good. You got 10 whales that own almost 50%. 68 own 20%. And retail, eh, it's picking up a little bit, 34%. How about Polygon? Another one of my holds. Not looking too good, Rob. You got nine whales, 68%. 17% at 83, and unfortunately, retail is only 14%. How about Avalanche? Avalanche, you got 23 wallets owning almost 50%, same thing. 108 own 30%, and retail is only at ugh, 22%. How about Uniswap? It's the centralized protocol. It should be pretty good, huh? Not so fast. 10 whales on roughly 50%. Again, could be exchanges, but you know there's a bunch of whales there. 103 own uh, 32% and retail is a very sliver at 14%. And then Solana, for some reason, is not on into the block. So I had to pull this data and just know that uh, not bad. Top 50 holders, about a quarter. Top 100 holders are about a third. So looking pretty good. But let's just call a spade a spade. There's a bunch of whales out there and they own a bunch of crypto. So just be aware of what's going on. And I understand your concern. And lastly, lastly, all the stuff that I just looked at, I could have easily done in a couple of weeks over at Token Metrics. They just implemented, this is a, a data analytics uh, website. They just implemented their, their chat GPT or their AI learning. So you can do things like just come over there and go, how much does Polygon have as far as uh, the people who own it and the different wallets? You could type that in. Instead of having to look for it, it'll just tell you what it is. And an example would be like, what's like, this is fun. This is always fun. What's the next 100x coin? So I can click on that. And of course, ChatGPT or the token metrics uh, GPT will, will take a little bit of a thought process and say, you know what? The next potential 100x coin for you, according to token metrics, is, I don't even know what this is, Squid Grow. It has TM investor grade of 7, oh, 70%, which is above the threshold of 70% for long-term holds. So that's just one aspect of it. You can ask a bunch of different questions. What I like about it is just taking a look at, you know, are things bullish or bearish? And then break it down by, uh, the actual crypto. Here's a, a research section if you just want to find out like some hidden gems. But again, if I want to take a look at, let's take a look at Solana. We just talked about that right now. So if I click on Solana, it'll tell me like what the trader grade is. Again, using artificial intelligence to see if it's high or low. I can take a look at the summary and so on and so forth. And then I can come out here. This is my favorite part price predictions. Now, I don't give too much faith in price predictions, and you shouldn't either, but it can be in your arsenal of different indicators that you can use to do whatever it is that you do. And it comes out seven days. And you can see that it's actually tracked pretty well across here. Now, it wasn't perfect. I had a little problem here as far as actual price versus uh, predicted price, but uh, flipped over here. And it's going to go out seven days. It's saying that, you know what? In seven days, we're looking at around $25. So hopefully that actually works out. Uh, you can pick up uh, token metrics. No, they didn't pay me. A friend of mine over there called me up and said, hey, can you talk about this? I said, sure. I don't even have an affiliate link. But uh, right now you can find out for a free account. And uh, within two weeks or so, you'll get access also to that chat GPT uh, functionality. It's not available yet, but you can get a free account for you know a certain amount of time or you can actually sign up and look at all that stuff. But that's it for today. So look, I know there's a lot of things going on. I went a little bit fast, but... These are the things that are going on. And I just want to get through as best as possible. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I don't care who you subscribe to, just get your information from somebody. But that's it for today. I do appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one.